Good morning, good morning, good morning. Morning! It's that time again, we're it's, back, aren't we? It certainly <laughs> is. Well, for everyone who's living in Africa right now, of one of our many, many viewers, you're probably in 40 degrees of heat this morning. I can mm. see you under a palm tree. Oh, don't, don't. In a, in a hammer, again. and you're swinging to and fro, <laughs> and you're watching the TV station at the same time. And we're going through the chill, the rain, the sleep. It's pouring in London this morning. You'll be pleased to know it's pouring in London and we've got someone holding on to the roof just in case. <laughs> it looks like any minute now, either the rain's gonna come through or the roof's gonna come off. No, we'll be fine. We have this thing in London called Fingers Crossed, don't we? We certainly do. So we have two legends on We the certainly, I'm two so legends. excited today. Three counting you oh, this morning. There we go. So we, so we, we have two special men today. It's going to be a great morning this one. I feel it in my water. You know, Good. I, well, in the rain anyway. <laughs> so, without further ado, basically to start off with, as you know, uh, every morning we always do a little bit on a Muslim story as well. Um, and uh, this is a, an incredible story uh, about um, um, a Muslim site in America, in Chicago, uh, and it was vandalized. And uh, this five-year-old little white boy, Jack, saw this on television and he thought, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and help these Muslim people. So he got all his possessions, you can just imagine it, can't you know, you know in a box, so there's probably buttons and Aww. toy soldiers. And he got all, all his possessions and he sold them. He sold all his possessions and he got $20 for this. And he went and took the $20 to the Muslim center just to say that we don't all want to see things what like this. What a lovely thing to do. Isn't that a wonderful thing? It certainly is. I mean, well, to even kindness. think like that at his age. Absolutely, five years old. Five years Very old. Very proud parents. Absolutely, mm. absolutely. I don't know about you, but I, do you know, I, I suddenly realise I'm quite hot in the studio. Do you know, it's going to be rare we get heating, <laughs> but I, I think we've got heating today, don't we? So, so at least we're warm on the inside. So we're going to obviously talk about some of our latest stories. And there's me flipping over the stories, because we're not prepared as usual. We got, <laughs> we got we had microphones flying one way a second ago. We suddenly, did. We suddenly realized we were wearing the wrong microphones. Oh, I know. What a morning. What a morning. But, but, here we go anyway. So um, there's a hard-hitting new play uh, being uh, exploring three generations of black men. Uh, and, and to encourage them to speak out about mental well-being issues. Uh, and it's premiering at the MAC in Birmingham. The play is called Revealed. And it's really the first production by a company called Menolog Platform, uh, founded by Red Earth Collective. Oh, now, I, I just think it's such a good idea again, because you know, we were talking about mental health yesterday. yesterday yeah. Uh, and how important it is these days to actually uh, work with mental health in all its different issues. You know, and, and uh, you know, I was just saying, you know, a million years ago when I was young, you know, in Victorian times, <laughs> you know, we, we just used to get beaten, you know, we just, <laughs> that, was that, that was their way of getting controlling us at the time, you know. Um, but how different uh, schools are today as well, and how different the policies are. But, do you think, you know, it, within the African and Caribbean community, is there more needed to be done, really, in mental health issues, what do you think? Yes, there is, and I'm really pleased to hear that they're actually, you know, discussing it now, and what I'm finding is that men are a lot more aware of it, they're discussing it with each other, and, and they're also taking responsibility and discussing it with young men, too. Mm -hmm. And there has been a long history of mental illness in every community, yeah. but some of us tend not to discuss it, or some of us yeah. feel that it's not, uh, it's not a problem, yeah. and then we wonder why everything goes wrong, yeah. you know, but you know, we have to learn to um, talk about these things, Absolutely. and I'm really happy that they're actually doing this, and I hope they take this, you know, it, everywhere, it not just to Birmingham, no, it needs to come to London as well, because I'd and be a great supporter of that, and I'm no, sure you would too. I think it's so important now, um, on our show, uh, as you know, everyone, we support all the communities, uh, irrespective of the colour of their skin. Every person who lives in Britain, every person who's watching this show, 
is so important to us. Yeah, we give people a voice, the community yeah. in particular. That's what we're here for. Absolutely. I'm moving on. <laughs> <laughs> as, I, as I flick my eyes back down onto the paper below, um, there's um, a new uh, um, issue happening at the moment, and again, it's after the recent death of Cyril Regis. Um, Cyril Regis was an extremely well-known football player. Uh, he was part in the 1970s, 1980s of, of, of a group called the Three Degrees. Uh, not, not the singing group. Not the singing group. No. Sing, although Let's they were photographed clear. once with yeah. the singing group. Mm. But um, he experienced a lot of racial abuse you know, in, in his time. Uh, and so now um, they're trying to set up a campaign um, that will create a 10-foot bronze statue uh, of Cyril Regis, uh, Laurie Cunningham and Brendan Batson, um, to actually commemorate what they went through and how these days we should remember that and how, you know, in the future, really um, things like this, I know there's a lot of issues these days where the Football Association have, have tried to stamp this out. The Professional Football Association players have stamped it out as well. But it is so important. It's, it's still, still happening. there. It's, it's still, still happening. happening. And it's, you know, we're, we're in 2018 and it no. hasn't got any better. No. And to be quite frank, I think, yes, we can talk about it, for, but we just need to do something about it now. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that they're actually doing this thing, but when you think how long ago Cyril Regis and all these men have yeah. been in football, and racism is still, it's still there. It's still there, and you know, it's it's one of those things we all have to work on. Really. It is, you know, and you know, what is the point anyway? You know, I mean, to be honest, uh, as you know personally, I uh, embrace all the communities first of all. And if you look at the Black, African, and Caribbean communities, they, in reality, are our top sports people today. You know, in so many areas of Britain. And it's just something we should be proud of. You know, we should be proud of these types of people who are tremendous role models for young people. You know, and and, and it's not just football, really. When you think about it's not just football. Know. It's athletics. It's swimming. There's there's all sorts of uh, different things sort of happening now. And the biggest and best part of it all is that they remember a lot of these uh, superstars. Now, they remember um, how they were brought up, they remember their youth, they remember the situations they were in, and they give back. And I think that's really important as well, that they're giving back, uh, and they're trying to encourage young people again to get more into it, to motivate more into sport at the same time. You know, um, we have so many issues right now, especially in London, we have obviously things like knife crime gangs, and all these types that's of things. That's just got out of hand now. Really and has. so anything yeah. that I feel that can actually uh, promote Britain, promote um, young people in Britain, I think is so important. Well, that's one of the things we encourage on this show as well, because we always do like to bring you know, the youths as well as students to, to have a voice and say how they feel about being in the UK and even people from abroad, yeah. you know, immigrants as well. So, um, and we really, could be here a long time discussing. Well, I mean, it, it, it's it's a really good discussion this morning because obviously we uh, our guests this morning are very steeped in the history. Yes, they are. They are. You know, of black yeah. culture, and and we wish. We to need a whole show from the both of them. Really. I know. We need to. We <laughs> they need have to, so much to say, viewers. I know. So we we need to celebrate this this morning. We do. Yeah. I think it's very very. It's important. a coup for us today to have them. It's here. a coup. Yes. <laughs> it's certainly, it's a coup. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you Get it on with it. It, it. It's a coup. Yes, it's, it's definitely a coup. So, Brianna. Brianna and the French President, uh, Emmanuel Macron, are meeting in Senegal. And I think they're actually meeting in Senegal as we speak. So, I think they're in Senegal High Street. I don't think they are. So, I just made that bit up, but I just thought I would localise it a little bit if I could this morning. No, it's not going to work. <laughs> but they are both coming together to try and promote child, childhood education, children's education. Um, and they're going to attend an event um, that is 
is designed to create a partnership between all of these uh, factions to actually improve uh, the education of children in Africa. It's quite interesting. What a the combination there, Rihanna and and, and, and uh, president. the president, President yeah. Macron. You know, and, and well, he I think is a young president. So. He, is, he is a young president. He, you know, he, he reminds me, um, you know, uh, of the young presidents, American presidents of the past. You know, um, and uh, who were you thinking in particular? I, I can't remember his name. JFK. JFK. Ah, that's so. the one. JFK. Mm -hmm. um, and he's got that sort of same type of charisma. Yeah, he does. He's got that same type of charisma, and you know, I mean not being sexist, but his wife is 20 years older than him as well, and used to be, I think, his drama teacher, or his music teacher, or his English That's teacher, right. yeah. one of those. So, uh, uh, so he obviously has um, a lot of interest in promoting um, these types of education. And he empathises well. with a lot of people, That, from yeah. what I've seen of him. Yeah. You know, he's going out into territories that a lot of the presidents, apart from Obama, yeah. You're not a big Obama fan, you know. But. I, I love Obama. I love Obama. You know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big Clinton fan as well. You know, I, I, I was, uh, I was. Very, it was very special because I was at the inauguration of Clinton, and uh, it went when he played the saxophone. Oh right, so, right. So, so, so I like that. Anyway, I, I move on. So believe it or believe it or not, is our ten minutes up? Our ten minutes is oh, up. Good cream. This is the exciting part of the this show This is now. the exciting part yes. of the show now. Now, hopefully, our guests are still remain with us because we did joke with them before, and they said, we said they're going to have to sing a clip so at the end of the I show. I know, they got a bit concerned, they, actually, they, 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 you know, <laughs> they, they were looking for the exit at that time, weren't they? <laughs> they but were, they were. I think they're still here. Yeah. So we're looking forward to really talking to two uh, experts, two legends within the black community in Britain. See you shortly. Well, Welcome to my first guest of the day, Tony Warner, who is director of Black History Walks. That's right. In London. Thank you for coming, Tony. I'm happy to be here. Good. Happy to have you. We, we, we've manacled him down <laughs> just in case he starts to try and run out of the building. But tell me, what, what started you? What, what, what gave you the inspiration to start Black History Walks in the first place? Um, I've done a whole bunch of the kind of regular tourist walks around London. You had a Jack the Ripper walk, the Ghost Walk, Underground Walk, whatever. All the, all the oh, good wow. ones. <laughs> 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 All the good ones. Okay. You, you haven't brought any no, <laughs> no, no. artifacts with you this morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> on those like two, three hour walks around London, there was no mention whatsoever of any kind of black Caribbean African history. So I thought, yep. you know, there, there must be something here. Cool. And then after a couple of years of waiting, I thought, well, no one's going to do it unless I do it. So I did it myself, and that was like 10 years ago. And it's been going for 10 years long. We have like 10 different walks in all different parts of London. Okay. North, East, South and West, Trafalgar Square, Elephant Castle, etc. Um, and that's a fast thing. What's the accent? Because there's part, it's part London, but there's... <laughs> right, I grew up in Yorkshire, in Bradford. There we right. go. Okay. And then I spent time in the St. Lucia and Barbados and Zimbabwe and England. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, a, what a mixture. What a so mixture. Is you can. So, what was your first walk? What was the first walk that you did? The first walk was the St. Paul's Bank Walk. That's in the oldest part of London. It goes back, and the black history in that area goes back 2,000 years at least. Tell me, what, what, what is the history on, on the, in, in that area? Well, that was where London began. So when the Romans came here 2,000 years ago, there was a whole bunch of African people came along with them. So there's black history from Roman times in that area. Oh, okay. But also they went to the foreign office here as well. So we know for a fact there were, there were black troops based as foreign office here as well. Yeah. And also they came from London. In fact, so we talk a lot about that kind of hidden history that's not part of the mainstream. Right. How, how long do, does it go on for? I mean, people book you to go on these tours. How long? Yeah, you the average length of walk is about two hours long. Oh, it's and a long time. Like I say, yeah. it's in Notting Hill, Trafalgar Square. So we also have a couple of walks that actually go inside Binnell. So there's a number of museums and art galleries that have a mass amount of African history on, inside the museums. But unless you come with, come with a guide, you wouldn't actually know it. So apart from doing walks outside in Japan Square, so in Notting Hill, we also have walks that go in museums like the National Gallery, the National Portrait Gallery, and the Imperial War Museum. So what do you think is your most uh, famous or favorite walk for yourself? What, what one do you really enjoy the most? Um, Don't tell me Jack the Ripper, please. No, 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 no. Black History and that Black History, that's what I think the, the, my favourite and most popular one is the St Paul's Bike Walk because most people who live in London okay. don't think there could be any black history there. I wouldn't have thought so either. No, no, that's true. Right. Right. That's, that's the most popular one and that's the longest one as well because there's so much. For example, right, in that area you have the Bank of London, 
Yeah. Bank, sorry, the Bank of England. The Bank of England, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> it is in London. It, it is actually the Bank of London, according to the government. <laughs> the Bank of England, right? Yeah. But the Bank of England at one time was full of gold. Now, there's no gold in England to speak of, whereas that gold coming from that gold is coming from Africa, in particular yeah. from Ghana, previously known as the Gold Coast, and also mm -hmm. other part, and South Africa. So then there's a, that's an obvious connection because you know the bank is full of gold, but the gold is literally coming from Africa. Yeah. And then you can look at the diamond trade. There's a place called. Um, oh, um, you know the diamond area in London? What's yes. it um, Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where you have diamonds trading on a regular basis. Yeah. Right. But you don't find diamond mines in England, France, Scotland, Wales. There's no yeah. diamonds here. So the yeah. diamonds come from Africa as well. So there's another connection there. Yeah. And that's just part of the story we talk about. Yeah. So that's one of the things you do, because you do a number of things, don't you? Because yeah. from what I understand, and we spoke earlier today, you've also won a couple of awards and you've been nominated. Can you tell our viewers what they All are? Right. So as far as the awards concerned, in 2011, mm -hmm. we, were, we were put into the top 10 um, history awards in London by The Guardian, so the list is top 10 uh, awards mm -hmm. in London. Mm -hmm. And then just, just this year, we've been interviewed by Condé Nast Traveller Magazine, and they're going to put us in top 15 awards as far as they're concerned. Fantastic. We'll be in their um, magazine also in there, get a little guide that comes out every once a year or so. So that's quite So that's coming out this year, is That's it? coming out in the next couple of months or so. Oh, fantastic. And then apart from that, um, because of the stuff I've done on film and film culture, um, it's a company called Screen Nation, and they're going to give me an award on Sunday the 18th um, to, to recognize the sort of record for the last 10 years or so. Yes, because you're doing something else on oh yeah. the A2. Yes, yeah, sorry, I should have said that. that. Yeah. Black History Wars is, is walks, talks, and films. Walks, talks, and, and films. Yeah, yeah. Every Walk. single month long. So there's something happening every single month long for the last 10 years or so. So because of the uh, film component of our, of our activities, we're having um, free screenings of a film called The Black Panther oh, at the okay. Genesis Cinema. And the cinema can hold 600 people, and we sold out free shows, 1 o'clock, uh, 4.15, mm -hmm. 7.30. So we're going to have something like almost 2,000 people coming down to our event and watch the Black Panther and having a Q&A afterwards. And I'll be dressing in royal attire, African traditional gowns, etc. So I can't event. wait, because we're going to be there. <laughs> I'm really well, we need to have see some pictures of you next week. Definitely. In, in her crown. <laughs> in my crown. In your crown. No, but Black Panther is a well-anticipated movie. Yep, it's going to be fantastic. Mm -hmm. What, what do you want to see as your future? And what do you want to see as the future for you know, people of colour in Britain? Uh, for my future, I think I'd like to have... I'd like to have my own cinema and show African Caribbean films every week as opposed to every month, all year long. I think I'd like to have about 50 different walks in, an, in London and also in Liverpool and Scotland and Manchester and Robin Country. I'd like to have um, a whole bunch of tour guides who can actually kind of give people um, an African Caribbean viewpoint of this country because there's so much history that just gets left out. Mm -hmm. And I think I'd also like to retire the Caribbean. <laughs> <laughs> After all of on, that, on the he wants to retire in the right <laughs> Lovely. And how can people get in contact with you right now? Um, we have a website, Facebook, Twitter. So the website is blackhistorywalks.co.uk. So it's just blackhistorywalks.co.uk. Or just Google Black History Walks. And then the Facebook and Twitter, same title, Black History Walks. And um, we have a newsletter that comes out every month that tells you what's happening when, when, and how. And that is the way to find out about our events because it's walks, talks, and films every single month, all year long. There's always something happening, not just in October. I can see why you were nominated and awarded. I mean, it's amazing what you're doing. Thank you. It is. Yeah. And, and again, it's so important. Yeah. You know, it's it, what we were talking it, about earlier. You know, it's what we're sort of talking about right now. You know, um, I think. Uh, all communities, whatever, irrespective of their colour, need to come together. Mm. Do you think, uh, just finally, um, that Brexit is going to affect tourism in London? What, what do you think? Well, yes it is, and I can tell you that the, some of the most um, um, eager consumers of the war are Americans, and that's why Americans, because we have a whole bunch of American students from Oregon, Oklahoma, whatever, who come as a group, 15, 20 strong, to do the walks. And increasingly, in the last couple of years, I've seen people coming from Norway, from Denmark, from France, from Spain, as a group, to do these walks. And these are kind of young kids, 18 to 25, whatever. But also, we find um, we have a lot of African Americans who are retired and over 50, and they come to find out the black history here because they want to have something that they can relate to and experience. Yeah. So it's, it's an increasing kind of um, a niche market. Yeah. Tony, unfortunately, time has beaten us. Oh no, really? that was fantastic. Uh, You've you got must to come, come back. Must come, back, come and, back. We want to hear some of these uh, historical facts that you know Definitely. a lot from more. I think it's fascinating. So, Tony, thank you so much for now. And uh, we're just going to have another short break. Uh, and then we're bringing in our second legend. We certainly are. 
panic over. You've not seen <laughs> microphones were flying one way, batteries were batteries flying. Batteries We thought, oh my god, we're producers not were coming in looking worried. <laughs> Guests were looking the, worried. What's to worry about? What's to worry about? We're professionals here. Absolutely. We're professionals here. And, and we have Terry Jervis today. <laughs> an amazing legend. I mean, your qualifications will take longer than we've got. Was, exactly. <laughs> to, to yeah, do, just give us a brief history of what, what you have done in the past and what you're doing now. And I know you want to sort of talk about your master classes as well, but just very briefly, tell us a little bit about yourself. And some of by, the by, amazing people who you've worked with. Um, by trade, I'm a producer and director. Um, this is what we were worried about. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Oh, so God, we're going to found out. Oh, yes, we got found out. <laughs> uh, no, but I'm a former BBC executive. Oh, that, that I used to run uh, departments within the BBC, but also my own shows. So, <clears throat> you know, I've amassed a 4.2 billion audience around the world Gosh. and uh, worked on shows from Michael Jackson's concerts to working with Oprah Winfrey and Quincy Jones and um, doing this special Queen, on Pavarotti. Queen Pavarotti. Uh, have you noticed I've gone silent? And Top Gear. <laughs> yeah, Top Gear is one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> And uh, yeah, behind the beat, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Just a lot of, lot of different TV stuff here and in Hollywood. But in terms of the diaspora and, and the African and the Caribbean diaspora, a lot of my shows are still being shown around the world on different TV stations, and that's many years Perfect. after. And you're working with a new TV channel again. Now, well, it's new to UK more, is it, is it not? Yeah. So you know, I've worked with Trace TV. Uh, right. For a number of years, and in fact, wait, wait, can you see, can you see Trace is, is 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 big um, around the world, but most predominantly <clears throat> in Africa and on the continent of Europe. In uh, it started in France, it came out of a British-based uh, magazine, which was called Trace, right. um, and uh, yes, we we've got Trace Play, which is a new. They're launching almost like very yes, soon, aren't they? Very soon. Yeah. Um, it's in beta testing right now, but okay. uh, that would be the kind of. And will that be on Sky as well? Or? We were on Sky. I had to trace sport on, on Sky during okay. the Olympics. I had to take a break okay. from television because, as you yeah. know, my business involves working yeah. with various government institutions and, and yeah. other commercial industrial businesses. Uh, so sometimes I have to wear many different hats. No, absolutely. Uh, um, and then, of course, uh, 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 you, you know, I have a merchandising business, so yeah. we produce. Yeah. Um, Games, toys, fashion, um, collectibles, and and you're so into Comic Con, aren't you? I'm into Comic Con. This is a Comic Con <laughs> fanatic. <laughs> comic fanatic. You so introduced me to Comic Con. You did, and everybody yeah, thought yeah, you were Doctor yeah. Who. When Everyone I thought I was Doctor MCM, Who. I was so How dare me? <laughs> <laughs> he was dressed as himself. <laughs> so, so, so I, I, I helped to, to start the comic book price guide um, back in the 1970s, uh, the UK. Comic book price, which guide. now Christie's house uses as with well. Christie's and Sotheby's and all of them using yeah. as a, a, a sort of benchmark for valuing uh, comic books. And in fact, comic books um, are a great tool for education mm -hmm. because I learned about Shakespeare through comics. I learned about the royal family through comics. Yeah. Um, engineering, because there was a great comic called the Eagle Comics and. And TV Twenty One. So and you uh, created a wonderful thing called Tropical Island. And yes, yes I created the TV shows based on that. And and even with the the new movie, the Black Panther uh, coming out, um, Tony Warner, who was on just before, uh, who runs Black History Walks, um, Tony and I have worked for a long time together, and we came up with this this concept around sort of Black superheroes, African Superhero Day. Yeah. And, and Tony launched it with my superhero, Spirit, Spirit of the, the Pharaoh, Pharaoh yeah. Very good. way back when. And um, it's, it's now become a fixture in his, his Black History Walks calendar, and it's, right. it's very well attended. And then he came to me and said, look, Terry, you know, I'm going to be doing this thing on Black Panther, and what? you know, in, you know, I work with Marvel. Yep. Uh, and you know and, Richard and, Hartley, who and I know Richard Hartley, 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 who, who kind of revamped the, revamped the, Black, the Black Panther, Panther comic yeah. book for Marvel. And so uh, uh, I, think, I think Tony told you his show was sold out. Yeah, yeah, yeah which is amazing. <coughs> now, you're doing master classes. Tell us about the master classes. Well, Tony um, came to me and said, look, you know, you've got this wealth of experience around the world and it's important that people know and share in that. And so he, he asked me 
to come up with the concept to do a masterclass where I, I basically talk about my career, but it's really about entrepreneurialism. Okay. And I think some, some people kind of think that, um, you know, whether they want to go on back on Bitcoin or yeah. back the horses or <laughs> yeah, football. Yeah. I mean, I don't do any of those things because I like to uh, instill in people that the most powerful tool you have is the mind. Absolutely. And it can overcome many, many things from your illnesses to how you see yourself in the future. And if you can imagine it, you can become it. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell us, where, where, how can people see these masterclasses? What is there a website and for? And what date is it? When well, um, the masterclass, the first of them for this year, is on the 11th of March, March at 3 p.m. on a Sunday. And they can go to the blackhistorywalks.co.uk. Right. So that's blackhistorywalks.co.uk or for those of you And Eventbrite, is yeah. that correct? Or? And Eventbrite. But I think if you go to the Black History Walks, Website and you see a lot more of what. And where, 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 where is it? Yeah, where is it? Yeah, <laughs> take a look at one. Where is it? Uh, uh, we'll find out. Yeah. What, what should people <laughs> expect from the masterclass? What yeah. are they? What should they be expecting? What are you going to be discussing? So first of all, I'm going to talk about my history and career. Then I'm going to talk about how do movies get made? How do television programs get made? How do radio shows or magazines get made? Because I do all of those things. And then I'm going to actually talk about the business because. There is a business to it, even like with you discussing what's happening in our communities. It's one thing trying to empower our communities, but if you imagine that our communities suffer primarily because of underfunding, health issues, uh, uh, education, um, and, and essentially what Tony was talking about was affirmation. You know, if you don't see yourself, I, I, I've done talks for him where people say it's incredible that you exist. Well, actually, in their world it is, yeah. because there aren't too many people like me in the world. So I have to, and, and it's great that Tony has Black History Walks, because it's, it's not that easy for somebody like me to just go and talk to no. You know, the an audience. Unfortunately, Terry, I'm, I'm looking See, at the See, we're going to have to have Terry back. Yeah. He is fascinating, <laughs> isn't he? And, and all the things. Guys, thank you so much for watching today. Uh, I hope it's sunny where you are. Diana and I are always uh, hoping that you're enjoying the program or anything. Thank you, Terry. Thank, thank you, Tony, Tony thank you. today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. And as always, we say keep on smiling. It makes people wondering what you're smiling about. Bye for now. Take care. Bye. <laughs>